Hello and welcome back to the THE student webinars. Um, today we have Queen's University with us from Kingston, Ontario in Canada and they're going to talk to us about what it's like to study in Canada and we're also going to hear from a student as well about their experience. So first things first, um, the session will be around an hour and if you have any questions please feel free to leave them at the Q&A box below um, and we'll get to them at the end of the session. Um, so I'm going to pass over to Aidan who's going to kick us off. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. We're really excited to have you here. Uh, and of course, we're excited to tell you about Queen's University, what we offer, scholarships. Uh, we have a ton of great info for you, so be sure to stick around. Um, yeah, so with that said, um, I'm a recruiter uh, at Queen's University. My area is Latin America. I'm a big fan of Spanish and uh, Brazilian culture. Uh, and if I do speak some Spanish as well too, which is something that uh, my colleagues uh, joining me here today uh, also speak. So uh, we'll try and keep it in English, but if you're desperate and you need to put a question in Spanish or you can't remember a word, no worries at all. Uh, we're more than happy to, uh, to meet you halfway there. Uh, with that said, I'll uh, pass things over. Hello, everyone. Buenas tardes. My name is Carolina Palmer. I work at Queen's University as the International Student Advisor. Part of my role consists of um, having my certification as a RICIA. So that's a regulated international student immigration advisor. Um, so it's great that we have that type of support for our international students, because as you may know, in order to come and study in Canada, uh, study permits are required. So we'll touch base a little bit about that on the presentation, but really happy to be here this afternoon and we'll chat with you soon. Um, I will let Angelica, do a quick little introduction about herself. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. My name is Angelica Olvera. I'm a second year student here at Queen's University. Um, I'm studying biochemistry with a minor in environmental studies. So, um, but I'm also an international ambassador for Queen's, which means that I get to share my university experience with you guys. Um, I was born in Canada, but I'm also half Mexican. So I'm very excited to be here today. And um, I hope I can help you guys picture your future here. So, yeah. Well, thank you both, Carolina and Angelica. Um, yeah, really happy to have you both on here too uh, to share your expertise. Uh, Angelica will be uh, popping up uh, now and again in the presentation to share her experiences. Uh, so I'll be inviting her uh, to do that. And Carolina has some great info for you on um, your journey to come to Queens, to come to Canada. So without further ado, we'll get started. We have a little presentation here for you today. Uh, and Perfect. Uh, Carolina and Angelica, could you give me a thumbs up if you can see my screen okay? Awesome. That's always great news. Okay. So we already did a bit of a welcome, but I just wanted to show you this photo here. This is our campus. As you can see, very stunning campus, beautiful limestone buildings. This is kind of the, this is the environment that you would study in if you were at Queen's. So just to give you a couple of numbers about us, um, by the QS World University Rankings, we're actually one of the top 10 universities in Canada. We're th in the top 200 in the world, and we have 3,700 international students from 119 different countries. So we're very well known globally. We're also a U15 member. And what that is, is that means we're actually one of Canada's top research universities. Uh, recently this year, we've uh, made some amazing breakthroughs in cancer research. So that's something that we're very proud of. And uh, Angelica, have you, have you been involved in any of that cancer research or studying cancer and biochemistry? Um, not yet, but it is something that is offered in my program. Um, I'm kind of more directed towards the environment, but it is something that has uh, come up with a lot of my friends. Oh, terrific. Well, that's great to hear. Uh, we also have a 92.9% .9 employment rate. And the way we calculate that is when you graduate, six months after graduation, you find a career in your field. So this is across all faculties. We're very employment focused. Um, and you know what, Angelica, I'm glad you mentioned the environment as well, too. It's not on this slide here, but we are actually in the top 10 
uh, universities ranked by the Times Higher Education. We're number eight this year. And Times Higher Education ranks universities based on um, advancing the UN sustainable development goals. So we do have a huge environmental focus too. And that's something that comes up in a lot of different programs. We also have partnerships with 220 universities in more than 50 different countries around the world. We're really proud of our global connections. And whenever we're, whatever class you're in, whether it's a business class or even an engineering class, we really try and bring a global perspective to the classroom. We're not just looking at things from a Canadian or a North American perspective. We really want you to be global citizens and know more than what's just in Canada. And obviously, you already have an amazing advantage coming from uh, another country, whether that's Colombia or somewhere else uh, in Latin America or really anywhere in the world. And that's something we want to further develop. And, uh, you know, really show you how to use that, transfer that experience and make it valuable to, to employers. Now, one thing that we're particularly well known for is our academic excellence. Um, we have a lot of research opportunities, some amazing professors. Our professors, a lot of the, them are or were former industry professionals. So these are folks that haven't just gone through academics their whole life. These are folks that are very much in touch with the fields that they're teaching. Speaking of those fields, let me tell you a little bit about what we offer. So this is the uh, Faculty of Arts and Science here. Faculty of Arts and Science is by far our largest faculty. And if you're seeing the word arts and you're thinking of painting or sculptures, uh, it's not exactly what it means. So arts for us would be like social sciences. So it could include things like psychology, sociology, political science, philosophy. And the sciences include everything from biochemistry, which Angelica is doing, uh, to physics, uh, applied economics. There's a lot of different programs here. Uh, as you can see on the screen, 2,600 different degree options. Most students actually start off their first year doing a general degree where they take what they like and then they choose their major or major minor. Now, Angelica, I know that's the route that you did. How was that first year for you? It was awesome. I got to meet a lot of other students that were that had different plans in mind. Um, I went in uh, as a life science and biochemist, but got biochemistry direct entry. Um, but I got to meet a lot of engineers that were in the same program as I was. So I got to make friends there. I got a lot to meet. Got to meet a lot of uh, life science majors, even though I'm not in life science anymore. So it was pretty nice. Yeah, so actually, you know, that's a really good point. We're not going to lock you into a program. We, we do have a lot of flexibility. And so if you do want to change programs, you discover something that's more to your liking, we're more than happy to get you there. We really want to make sure that whatever you're studying is going to be right for you, for your career goals, something that you're passionate about. Uh, one other question for you, Angelica, do you recognize the photo here on screen and have you been there? Unfortunately, I do not. I'm not sure I've been there. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Where is it? Well, you know, I'm, I'm sure you'll be there soon. This is actually our photo of our bio research center. It's north of the city. It's a beautiful lake and forest area. And we actually do a lot of environmental research there. Uh, so I imagine you'll be there, if not this year, probably next year. Fingers crossed. Okay, uh, next up is concurrent education. So for any of you who are interested in becoming teachers, we have a really well known uh, education program. And what concurrent education means is that you actually complete your education courses and your undergraduate degree at the same time. We actually get our students into the workforce a full year earlier than any other university in the province of Ontario. Uh, right now, we're seeing a desperate need for teachers if you want to uh, work in Canada. Uh, Carolina will talk a little bit more about what that those options sort of look like, but I can tell you we need teachers. Um, but the Ontario curriculum is widely recognized. It's very transferable. So even if you want to return uh, to your home country or perhaps travel somewhere brand new and teach, this program sets you up very well for that. You also have access to the largest career service department specifically for educators in Canada at Queen's. Next up, we also we have engineering. Uh, our engineering programs, like most schools, 
our general in first year, where we're going to give you that foundation that's going to be required for all engineering. After that first year, we actually let you choose whatever you want for your major. We have 10 different disciplines that we offer, everything from things like uh, chemical engineering, uh, all the way to uh, some really lucrative fields like mining engineering. So if there's an engineering program that you have in mind that you're interested in, uh, I can guarantee, almost guarantee that we have it. You do not have to compete to get into the program of your choosing. We guarantee your major. So you will always get your first choice. And if for whatever reason you do not want to do a general first year of engineering, you can apply to a direct entry uh, mechatronics or robotics engineering uh, or computer engineering. So a lot of options there. Okay. Uh, the next faculty, which is similarly named to Smith Engineering, is Smith Commerce. Um, so Smith Commerce is our flagship business program. We're actually rated as Canada's top undergraduate business program. It is competitive to get into this program, but once you're in, it's a very collaborative environment. We're very much project-based, and we're going to be teaching you a lot of skills like collaboration, um, group work, studying, working with people with different interests that are going to be very applicable to the business world. In this program in particular, we also have a very strong international focus. We understand that business is global. We'll even encourage you to spend a semester studying in another country. So if coming to Canada is not enough and you want to, you, you have a sense of adventure, you want to see how business is done in another part of the globe, we're happy to send you uh, to another country, whether that be somewhere nice and warm like Morocco or somewhere completely brand new like Japan. Uh, so a lot of good opportunities there and about 85% of our commerce students will study abroad. Our commerce students, when they graduate, a lot of them do not continue their masters. They actually find careers in their field very quickly. This is a highly recognized program. We also have health sciences for those of you who are interested in entering the healthcare field. Health sciences is not just a faculty, but also the program. And it's designed to create healthcare professionals. It combines the science of healthcare and medicine along with the social aspects that are required. In first year, you're gonna be working with a lot of dry labs. You're going to be doing uh, various online modules as well too. And by the time you're in third year, you'll actually partake in an amazing career fair where we're gonna introduce you to as many different uh, careers in the healthcare field beyond the typical doctor, nurse, dentist. I'm talking about many different careers that you haven't heard of before. We want you to know all the options out there. Third year as well too, you'll have access to the cadaver lab. So if you know what a cadaver lab is, uh, exciting. And if you don't know, I'll let you Google that one. Or actually, you know what, I'll save you the time. Angelica, what is the cadaver lab? Uh, basically a lab where you can go see cadavers. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Um, it, it's in the health science building, I believe. I've only been there once, but it was an amazing experience. I went there in high school, actually. Oh, terrific. Uh, just for those of the, those of, uh, that don't know, what, could you clarify what a cadaver is for us? Um, dead bodies, essentially. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're people's bodies that have been donated to science, so you can actually... Um, you know, see and work with a human before you work with a live human. It's very important. Finally, my slide will change here. There we are. We have nursing. So our nursing program is designed to uh, get you to become a full registered nurse. This is a professional designation. It's a fairly small program uh, with under 200 students coming in each year, and it's very hands-on. We actually have a hospital here on campus. Um, so, and looking right out at the lake, it's in an excellent spot. You'll actually be spending a lot of time in there as a registered nurse, so really getting those hands-on skills. We also have a lot of technology that you'll work with. So if you look closely at the photo on screen, you'll see that the students are actually working with a dummy. That's not a real person in the bed. That dummy will actually give them feedback on uh, how they're performing CPR, how much oxygen is getting in. And so you can actually see how you're doing in a measurable sense, which is very difficult when you're working with a real person. Um, but right now, similar to 
teachers, we have a real requirement of nurses. And I think that just goes for about anywhere in the, the world. Nursing is an excellent career to get into, particularly after the pandemic. Now, if you were looking at the slides carefully while I was going through, you might have seen the word internship pop up. So we offer Queen's Undergraduate Internship Program. And this in many ways is similar to a co-op, but with some notable differences. So internships allow you to get work experience while you're studying. Our internships run from 12 to 16 months. So they're a full year. Rather than doing just a three or four month stint, at a company, you're actually gonna be very much getting involved in your internship workplace and really becoming a valuable member of the team. Um, hi, Boo here, um, did a great, she actually did an internship with us here at Queens, um, did an amazing job working with tech and data and she's now studying at MIT um, for her master's. The average quip salary is about 50,000 Canadian for that internship year. Uh, so it's a great way to earn some extra money while you're studying as well too. Um, and it does add a year onto your schooling, but I will tell you that this experience is invaluable. One of our current uh, international ambassadors actually did an internship over the summer and he's in his final year of uh, computer science at the moment. And he actually has a job waiting for him when he graduates. They liked him so much at his internship that he's good and set uh, for when he, he finishes school, which will be happening in uh, uh, fairly soon, end of April. So as I mentioned before, um, we're very career focused. We're in the top 110 graduate employability uh, by the QS World Rankings, and that is worldwide. Um, we have graduates all over, Apple, Microsoft, NASA, uh, some amazing places, not just in Canada, but really globally and a lot of great spots in the United States too. Now, I've talked a, a fair bit about what we offer, but let me tell you a little more where we are and uh, some of our culture as well too. So we're in a city called Kingston, Ontario. Kingston is halfway between Toronto, which is the big English city in Canada, and Montreal, which is the big French city in Canada. It's right on Lake Ontario in a beautiful spot. There's a lot of nature, a lot of hiking. Um, and one thing that I quite enjoy is we have the most restaurants per capita uh, than any other city in Canada. We are also ranked as Canada's best student city. It's very safe. Everything's very walkable. Campus is only a 10 minute walk from downtown. But rather than hear about it from me, Angelica, what, do, what were your thoughts on Kingston? What's, what are your, some of your favorite spots to visit? What do you like to do? Yeah, well, Kingston is a very walkable city. Um, I noticed in the picture on the top right there, that's Juniper, which is like a right in between both campuses that we have. I love it there. It's right in front of the water. It's amazing. Um, I also see Balzac's there, which is in like on Princess Street, which is basically it's downtown Kingston, uh, which is only like a 10 minute walk from campus, which is really nice. Um, so I think that it's pretty easy for us to get involved with with the Kingston community, which is yeah, it's been pretty great. Yeah, it, it's true. It is really easy to get in touch. There's a lot of live music in Kingston, which is something that surprised me when I moved here. Carolina, you've, I think, been around here a bit longer, and you're also, uh, you're a lot of the nature. Anything you'd recommend to students? Yeah, so also as a proud Queens uh, University alumni, the reason why I chose Queens was not only because of its education, um, but also because of Kingston itself. It's it's beautiful. It's very welcoming. It's home to three uh, post-secondary institutions. So there's a lot of like student life. There's lots of students always like walking around. Um, the fact that it has multiple restaurants. I'm a big foodie myself. I love trying different types of um, different ethnic foods and you can find a little bit of everything in Kingston. So if you are a foodie like myself and Aiden, um, again, Kingston is just such a great welcoming community uh, to get from one point to another. It doesn't take very long. And there's also the great transportation system as well that, um, you know, you can get from campus to either the West End, downtown, wherever you want to go. Terrific, yeah, thank you both. So 
Now that we've told you a little bit about the city, let me tell you a little bit about campus here. So campus is, in one word, beautiful. We're a stunning spot. We're a very old campus. We're one of Canada's oldest universities. We have a lot of these beautiful limestone buildings that you can see here on the left of the screen. So it almost looks like a bit of a castle there, but you'll see plenty of stuff like that. Some great study areas too. And of course, some excellent sports stadiums. Now, one thing that I think it's really important to highlight at Queen's is just the community and what the campus culture is like. So having worked at a few different institutions and studied a few different places as well too, I think that Queen's, in my opinion, study uh, has hit the perfect balance between academics and uh, fun and social life. So there really is a nice balance of that. And there is an incredible amount of school spirit. Whatever school amount of school spirit you're picturing, there's a lot more. Queen students are very happy to be at Queen's. Uh, Carolina, were you part of the, did you have all your Queen swag and everything when you were, when you were a student? Absolutely. And you bet that I went to the first uh, uh, football game during uh, orientation, which is a big event here for um, Queen's University and its students. So very vibrant. Yeah, terrific. Angelica, how about you? What do you what do you like to do on campus? What are your, some of your favorite spots? And if you can, could you give us a snapshot into what the culture's like? Yeah, it's I love it here, obviously. Um, I'm part of the cycling team. So there's a lot, I feel a lot of that like spirit, like the sport spirit, which is really nice. Um, I think uh, we have a lot of opportunities to participate on uh in activities on campus. Um, so we have a lot of opportunities to meet a lot of people. I'm also part of the UNICEF club. So I'm also part of another club where I get to meet uh, other Spanish speaking people. So um, I think, yeah, I think what I love most about Queens is the opportunities that we have to meet people with the same interests as us. Yeah. And actually I'm really happy you highlighted the clubs. I almost forgot to mention, we have the most clubs at a university per capita in Canada. Uh, I think we're at over 300 different clubs. Uh, so many different things, whatever your interest is, I can almost guarantee that you'll find it at one of our clubs. We also, uh, as I mentioned earlier, are very big into sports. And um, of course, I will say for the, for the folks on the call, we have a terrific soccer team, or as you call, or as, uh, in South America, football, I will say people get confused in Canada if you say football, uh, but for now we'll say football. Terrific football team. Hockey is still the, the most prominent sport in Canada, but we are seeing a steady increase in uh, soccer and much more popularity. If, for, uh, if, if playing soccer at a very highly competitive level is something that you want to do, we have a varsity team for you. We also have intramurals uh, where you can... It's still competitive, but it's a little more fun. You compete against your friends. And I've also seen so many games of pickup soccer around campus. And for whatever reason, if that's just not enough soccer for you, uh, there is also uh, local teams that you can join, including futsal teams, uh, so you can continue playing soccer throughout the winter. About 80% of our student population is active in sports, uh, recreation, um, and we have two terrific gyms uh, to do this at. We also have, and this is maybe not a specific recreation area of Queens, but we are right on the waterfront. We have a beautiful path that goes along the lake. And I see folks all the time jogging there. I like to go there and longboard per, uh, personally, but it's a good spot just to go out and get some fresh air. We also have 18 different residence buildings on campus. One of the most important things is that we guarantee you a space and residence. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about residence later, uh, but typically uh, we have uh, single and double rooms uh, in various configurations. If for example, you wanna live with three, uh, an additional two or three of your friends, we can arrange that, but generally it's one to two students per room of all different types. And the, res the residence buildings are also all located close to the classrooms and around the dining hall. Speaking of the dining halls, we have three different dining halls. We accommodate all diets. So if you have any specific dietary restriction, we'll make sure that it's met. Um, the food is also really good. Uh, it is real food. And when I say it's real food, it's not pizza. 
it's not just it's not just pizza and burgers there are those things there too uh, but you will actually be getting vegetables properly cooked meat uh things that you actually need to be nutritious and healthy angelica uh just a quick thumbs up or down food on food on campus yeah just one thumb up not two okay i, I kind of goaded that one but anyway um, with that said, I'm going to pass things over to uh, Carolina to talk a little bit about our commitment to you. Super. Thank you, Aiden. Uh, again, so many wonderful resources available for our students. I know that this is a lot of information to kind of take on, um, but please feel free at the end of the presentation. If you have any questions, we can refer back to any additional information that you may want to know. So what's our commitment to you? Here's what makes Queen's really an exceptional institution for you to come and study at. There is the $7,000 tuition credit. So as long as you pay for a part of your tuition by the summer, you're eligible to receive this $7,000 tuition credit. So we know coming as an international student, it can be a little costly. So any little bit helps. Um, there's also our commitment to you that there's no increase in tuition fee fees for the, for, for the four years of your studies here at Queen's University. Um, another great resource that we have available, and that's where I would come in, is immigration support services at no cost. So again, you're coming here to study, but then there's also the immigration side of things that you kind of have to worry about as an international student in order to come and study. So we provide you with high level support of immigration services, pre-arrival, and don't forget as well, there's also the support services from Border Pass. Um, I will, we will add the information about Border Pass here shortly, um, but they will assist you with um, helping you apply for your study permit to be able to come and study here in Canada. Another great resource that we have that's part of the commitment uh, package is the early residence move-in. And let me tell you why this is important. Moving in to or moving to another country can be exciting. It can be challenging at the same time. So by you being able to come and move into residence early on, it gives you that opportunity to adjust um, and, and get used to the Canadian um, environment around you for the first little bit before you begin your study. So what a great resource to have. Uh, in addition to that, there's the free airport pickup. So I, I, if we have any parents joining us in this session, I know that this is probably um, something very important when we have our children coming and studying in a different country. Uh, the opportunity to have someone be able to come and pick them up directly at the airport. It's always um, something really important. And uh, to me, it's, it's, it's a great, um, it's a great resource that we have available for our students. Last but not least, there's also the personalized uh, guidance and mentorship uh, program. And again, this is all available to you um, so that uh, we can, so that it's available for our first year students. All right, so in addition to that, there is the international student support. Again, moving from one country to another, it's definitely very exciting. I know that for myself, I immigrated to Canada at a very young age, but having that extra level of support available for you before you immigrate to another country is extremely crucial. And that will help you with your studies because it will set you up for success from the past and um, right from the beginning. So what do we do? We offer pre-arrival support through Quick, so that's Queen's University International Center. Uh, so we offer pre-arrival information. That's information related to um, your insurance, your academic success, um, culture shock, cultural differences between different countries, career services, and also, I know that um, for most of our first year students, you would probably choose to move in residence, but there's also off campus housing um, support available for our students um, should you have any questions. And here's just a, a quick 
quote um, from one of our students, Aziki, uh, talking about her uh, positive experience here at Quick. So again, lots of immigration support available for our students, not only from the beginning, but right up to post-graduation. All right, so you're probably wondering, what does my journey to Queens look like? How do I get started? We, ha I have to worry about the immigration component. So here's a, a quick brief overview of what it's going to look like for you. So the most important thing that you need to do is find the right program for you. So what does success mean? It means selecting the right program from the beginning. Um, so make sure that you do take some time, that you get connected with us, um, that you learn as much as you can about the program so that you know that you are making the right choice. Once you have selected the program that you want to study in, then you get to apply to Queen's University. When you apply, you will need to wait for your, your offer of admission. Once you get your offer of admission, um, you need to accept it if that is the route that you want to take to come and study here with us directly at Queen's University and pay your tuition. Um, once you have paid for your tuition, you will receive uh, what is called a provincial attestation letter. So this is new to Canada. Um, it was um, put into effect actually January of this year of 2024. So all students wanting to come and study in Canada that are undergrad students will need to have a provincial attestation letter. Without having this letter, you will not be able to apply for a study permit. So make sure that um, you get this letter directly from Queen's. You don't have to submit a separate application to IRCC, to the Canadian Immigration Government. This is directly, we do all the work for you. So we issue this provincial attestation letter and then you will receive your letter of acceptance, also known as an LOA. So these two, the provincial attestation letter and your letter of acceptance, these are two very important documents that you will need to have in order to apply for your study permit. Perfect. So we have applied for our study permit. Then what's next? Hopefully we all get approved to come and study here in Canada. So that's when you start to um, be part of the, the journey as well. So you travel to Canada. Once you arrive to Canada, whether it's at the border, but most of you, you may come through the airport. That's when you will actually receive your study permit, okay? So even though we apply for it beforehand, we may get approved for our visa to come and be able to travel into Canada, but you won't physically get your study permit until you arrive to Canada. So be sure that you review your, your study permit in detail because while you're a student um, studying at a post-secondary institution uh, full-time, you are able to work up to 24 hours per week. So in your study permit, usually you will see this uh, a remark embedded into it saying that you're eligible to study uh, or work on or off campus. Um, so it's important and again, I know that this is a lot of information, but this is why we offer that pre-arrival support for you so that you can have all this information by the time that you come and 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 start your, your studies at Queen's. I can tell you, you will know this information inside and out because we repeat it. Um, we want you to, to be ready to come and, and make it as, as easy and seamless as possible for you. So once you review your study permit, you will have the opportunity to finally come and meet your friends at orientation and be able to, to begin your studies. Um, one of the things that students can um, have the opportunity to do after they complete their studies um, at Queen's University, you may think, okay, maybe I do want to spend a little bit more time or get more in Canada work experience. That's when you will be eligible to apply for a post-graduation work permit. So what does a, a post-graduation work permit? That's actually a great question. So Queen's University students who complete an academic degree um, here that is at least of eight months of length or more 
will be eligible to apply, provided that you meet all the other guidelines for a post-graduation work permit, also known as a PGWP, for up to three years. So I know that Aiden was talking about the internship program. Maybe you had a really good positive experience and really good um, leads to be able to, to, you know, be able to work after graduation. This is a work permit that's available to our students after graduation in order to be able to continue working. And there's no restrictions. So remember, while you're studying, in Canada, you can only work up to 24 hours per week during your academic session. But once you graduate, you can apply for this um, specific post-graduation work permit, which is an application that you can only submit once in your lifetime. So what a great opportunity to have to not only come and study, but be able to Im like immerse yourself and experience the real life um, Canadian um, like work around us. Super. So now back to you, Aiden. Perfect. Thank you, Carolina. Um, yeah, so for those of you, I saw there's quite a few questions coming in about that, about the work permits. We will, I promise, get to those at the end. Um, one thing to remember, though, is this might be a lot of info, but we're going to be there to support you throughout the way. You don't need to go, oh my goodness, just yet, uh, at, or at all, really. If you're ever stuck, Carolina is here. She's great. She's always going to help you. Y si tienes uh, preguntas en español, uh, puedes pedirlos en español también con ella. So just keep that in mind there. Um, so I want to quickly talk about the language requirements. I'm sure you are all fine with English because you've listened to us talk in English for the entirety of this call uh, or this webinar. But um, you may need to complete a a language requirement test. If that's the case, these are the scores that you have to get. Again, don't need to remember this. We'll help you with that. Um, that said, if you've been studying at an institution that teaches uh, in, in primarily in English for the past or for the last three years of your high school, you do not have to complete a language test. So it is only required if you've been studying in another language. Uh, or it's not even studied in another language, but studying at an institution where the primary language is not English. If you are in a country where the primary language is English, you do not need to do a language uh, test as well. So just a couple of things to keep in mind. If you, need to, if you have any clarifications, you could always reach out too, and we can talk a bit more about that. If for whatever reason, you do not meet the language requirements, it's not the be all and end all, uh, we'll actually get you up to speed on your English. Uh, over uh, the summer uh, or potentially a year before, depending on your score, at our School of English. We have a program called QBridge, which gets you ready, uh, academic, gets you ready and gets your English up to an academic level so that you can succeed in your studies. Now, on to some more fun things. Uh, we also offer scholarships. And I will tell you the best thing about our scholarships, you don't even have to apply for them on a different application. Once you apply to Queen's, you will automatically be assessed for the scholarships that you see on screen here. All of them are automatic. When you receive an offer of admission, any scholarships you've received will also be included on that offer. So you will know exactly how much money you are getting. You know that your tuition is locked in for four years. And you can take advantage of that um, tuition credit of $7,000. So it's $7,000 off of your first year of tuition. And that really allows you to plan financially. Now, you'll see at the bottom there, under scholarships, uh, there's a range from $7,000 to $20,000. These are all in Canadian dollars, by the way. Um, those are sort of our smaller scholarships. We have a good number of them, but the bulk of our scholarships are actually in the forty to one hundred thousand dollar range. We have so much, uh, so many scholarships to give. Uh, in fact, we had to go back last year and hand out more because we had some money left over. We didn't realize that right away. So um, we make sure that uh, there are always students who are receiving these scholarships, and if you are in. Uh, arts or engineering, and you have above a 90% average, you're guaranteed an entrance scholarship. So as far as how applying goes, uh, you want to make sure to review the admission requirements. Um, so our admission requirements can be found on our website. If you type in Queen's University Canada and type in 
uh, admission requirements or program requirements, it'll be the first search on Google. And if you can't find it or you uh, want me to send you the link instead, I'm more than happy to do so. You can also find our application on there. There's three different ways that you could apply to Queen's. If you are applying to other schools in Ontario, so that's the province we're in, I recommend that you use the Ontario University's Application Centre, which we lovingly call OWAC. Uh, Angelica, that's probably the one you, you used, right? Yes, okay. Um, for $156 Canadian, you get the choice of three universities and uh, you basically just select your universities and hit send. Alternatively, if you're also applying to American schools and using Common App, you'll also find us on Common App. Uh, if we're the only school that you're, if you're applying to American schools and we're the only school in Ontario you're applying to, I strongly recommend using Common App. And if you prefer not to use either of those, you can also apply directly to us on our website. Once you've done so, uh, we will actually give you a to-do list. There are some documents that your school will need to send in, namely your transcript and your grades. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. If we have any questions, we can always get in touch with your school. As far as unofficial documents go, so we can receive documents from you, but any offer is uh, conditional on receiving the final documents from your school. So just keep, sorry, once, every, once things are sent in, keep an, an eye on your application status, check your emails, check your junk mail. And if you have questions, we're here. So feel free to contact us. We also have a, te a terrific team of international ambassadors. Uh, one of which is here on the call with us tonight. And we offer a lot of different languages. Uh, our international ambassadors are in a variety of different programs. And uh, Angelica, share with us, which languages on this list do you speak? I speak English, Spanish, and French, and I'm learning Italian, but that's still in progress. <laughs> oh, terrific. Yeah, so if, if you want to chat um, with Angelica or another in international ambassador um, about what student life is like, uh, their experiences, you could certainly do that. If you want to chat in Spanish, uh, I think you'll just be chatting with Angelica. I, don't, I think you, you're the only one on our team who speaks Spanish. So uh, with that said, our international ambassadors are here and they're more than willing to chat with you. Uh, keep an eye out. We will be sending, uh, uh, if you do apply, we will be sending more information out about how to connect with our ambassadors. As well too, you can always connect with me. Uh, my email's on screen there. It is americas at queensu.ca. Very easy to remember. I do recommend if, that you check us out on Instagram too. Uh, if for nothing else, then just for the beautiful photos of campus, the QR code there will take you to those photos. And that's everything from us today. Uh, I'm now going to pass things back over to Amelia uh, to go through the questions with us. Amazing, well, thank you so much. Great to hear what Queens uh, has to offer. So we have a few questions that have come in. Um, I'll just go through them in order. I think some of them we might have already covered, um, but just in case, you guys have anything more to add um so the first question we have is are there any clubs or networks for spanish speakers in particular angelica i'll leave that one to you sure yeah so um there's two that i know of so the first one is the um, q salsa which is the Queen Spanish and Latin American Student Association. They have a lot of fun events. Um, they do a lot of dancing, obviously. So they do salsa, bachata, um, and they have like um, some for intermediate, some for like, you know, you can be a beginner as well. It's for everyone. Uh, they have dance parties, which is a lot of fun. Um, I've been to some of them, which, yeah, it's been pretty nice. And then there's also ONAS, which is the uh, Queen's U Organization of Latin American Students. Um, I've also been to a lot of their events. Um, they do a lot of like trivia nights, a lot of collabs with uh, Quick actually uh, for Spanish nights where you can meet a lot of other Spanish speaking um, students. They do events for Dia de los Muertos, for example. Um, so those are the two that I know of. They might, there may be more, but uh, those ones are pretty awesome. So I definitely recommend checking those out. You can follow them on Instagram too. They have a lot of uh, content there, so. Oh, yeah, that's great to know. And yeah, sounds like there's a lot of networks and clubs in general at Queen's. Um, 
So yeah, the second question would be, where can I find out more about grade requirements? So if you'd like, uh, I can send you the links. You can email me. Uh, again, the email is americas at queensu.ca. So fairly easy to remember. Uh, but uh, we actually do also have our competitive averages posted online. Um, so if you just type in Queen's University competitive averages in Google, it'll I guarantee it'll be the first page that pops up and you can see everything there listed by program. But again, if you want, I'm happy just to send it to you as well. I'll, uh, I'll put my email back up on screen. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, and we'll be sure as well to share that email after the call um, to the email we send to everyone afterwards. Um, a question now about permits that people need for work after they finish studying. Yeah, so that that's actually a great question. Um, so for um, on or off campus work, so while you're studying, when you apply for your study permit, you do not need to apply for a separate work permit. Um, so that's why it's important when you arrive at the border that you check your study permit to ensure that those very important remarks are in your study permit, but there's no separate application. That's all part of your one study permit application. However, once you graduate and if you want to stay and have the opportunity to work um, after you're done your studies, then you would have to apply for that post-graduation work permit. We are there to assist you with the application throughout the process. We have many webinars, again, that quick the Queen's Un University International Center hosts to gu guide you and show you what the application looks like. So there's a lot of support available, um, but there's no need for a separate application while you're a student. Um, however, uh, once once you are ready to maybe work after graduation, there is a separate application for that. Well, thank you so much for that, Carolina. Um, and now we have a question um, on how uh, employability after people finish studying how easy is it to meet with future employers? And um, are there a lot of career services that Queens provide, um, uh, networking opportunities and being put in touch with future employers? Is that is that something Queens um, provides? It is, yes. That's actually a really good question. And uh, to whoever asked it, thank you for thinking ahead about that. So we do have a terrific career services department. And what I say terrific, I mean, they want you to connect with them in first year. They have a plans to get you ready basically for careers from year one. So it never hurts to connect early about uh, career opportunities. We also have a career services advisor specifically for international students. So whether you're planning to stay in Canada and you hope to make your, your, your goal is to make your career here in Canada or return to your home country, uh, and work, we have someone here who's going to help you and has that international knowledge and that international experience. Queen's, as I mentioned earlier, is also a very old university. We have a very extensive alumni network. Uh, we have alumni around the world, particularly in Canada and the United States. Al Queen's alumni like to hire Queen's students. It is very common, especially in faculties like commerce and engineering, that you'll see the alumni on campus uh, here hoping to scout out basically new talent for their businesses. We do have career fairs in a lot of our programs, uh, namely Health Sciences has one of the biggest ones, um, but pretty much every faculty has their own career services in it as well too. The last thing I would recommend is connect with your professors. Uh, professors are very friendly uh, and let them know what your goals are. There's, they may uh, have connections in the field that uh, you weren't aware of and they, and they maybe just don't advertise unless you put it out there that you're looking for them. So that's something I really recommend that every student does. Uh, you never know if you're to get signed or not, but they really are an underutilized resource. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much, Aiden. Um, it's good people are thinking ahead about that. And um, we now have a question about accommodation. Um, 
mainly the cost uh, and maybe if there's any more information you could provide about the different types of accommodation you have on campus. I know that we mentioned it in the presentation as well. Yeah, I'd be happy to give a, a, a quick run through. Um, so we have 18 different residence buildings on campus. Most of them are sort of in the same area around the main dining hall. Um, we ha offer single rooms, single plus, which is like a large room. We offer a uh, single with a shared bathroom. We offer double, uh, double plus, so a large double room double loft so it's kind of like you have one person on the bottom and one person sort of in a loft up top and then we have not very many and only on request triples and quads uh, you will not ever be put in a triple or a quad um, the residence rooms are fairly standard like you get a bed you get some shelving space um, yeah the the most recent building uh, was uh, completed I think a year or two ago it hasn't been around for very long so it's brand new um, and there, there's really all different styles. You do also get your, your choice. So you'll be given a time to log in and pick your room style, pick your building. Um, as Carolina mentioned, you do get to move into residence early at no extra cost if you take advantage of the Queen's expanded commitment package. And I recommend you do. Um, we, when it comes to food, the dining halls are all centered around the residence buildings. And uh, I sort of already touched on the food, but um, the cost is about $17,500 Canadian. Uh, in, in USD, maybe you're looking at thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars USD. The Canadian dollar is quite low right now. Um, that $17,500 includes an all-you-care-to-eat meal plan. Uh, so eat as much as you want, please. Um, just make sure it's healthy as well as you know, some of the fun stuff. And uh, it also includes your, your room as well, too. So it's all lumped in there in one. And you pay the same price that Canadian students pay. So there's no difference between what you pay and somebody who's here in, in the country already. Amazing. Yeah. So many accommodation options. So definitely something to suit everyone's needs, for sure. Um, and we now have a question about application deadlines for next year. Great question. Um, yeah, so for a, a September start, which is when most folks would start, um, the deadline to apply is February 1st. That said, I strongly recommend that if you're sending in an application, try to get it in uh, before mid-January. Find some time over the Christmas break maybe to, uh, to send it out. Um, but I'd recommend just giving yourself a little bit of a buffer um, just in case. Um, but yeah, as long as we get it before February 1st, you're good to go. Perfect. Perfect. And a final question, which um, is there any fee waiver, waiver for attending the webinar? Um, I think probably the answer being no, but feel free to respond. Uh, unfortunately not. No, there, the, the application fee, uh, if you apply directly or you apply through Common App, you'll find it's definitely a bit cheaper. So that, that would be my recommendation. Uh, we don't do fee waivers, um, but uh, we do thank you regardless for attending the webinar. And I really do hope it was uh, good, good information for you. Definitely, definitely. And um, it sounded like you also had a lot of scholarships and uh yeah, financial uh, opportunities for those um, wanting to apply as well. So yeah, thank you so much. Um, those are all the questions we have. I'm not sure if there's anything else everyone wanted to add uh, or any final words. Well, uh, one last question and Angelica, I'll direct it towards you. Any any tips for, for applying or uh, when you're looking at university that you want to share from a, a, this is a very recent experience that you've had not too long ago. So. Any tips for when you're applying or for when you arrive? Either uh, or Oh, anything well, top of mind that would be helpful. Um, I, I guess like when you arrive, just try to integrate yourself as best as you can to Queens and try new things. I think that's what I wish I had done. Like just trying, like meeting more people, joining more clubs, 
um, whether it be sports or just like other club, random clubs or joining the salsa dancing, for example. Um, yeah, just trying to meet as many people as you can and uh, get as many experiences. Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah, um, it's it's great to, see, to hear how many clubs and how great your experience has been, Angelica, for sure. Perfect. Well, um, if you guys have anything to add, feel free. Um, otherwise, thanks to everyone for, for attending. Yeah, thank you all so much for coming tonight. We really appreciate it. And thank you for your really good questions too. Those were excellent. Thank you as well, Amelia, for, for hosting. We really appreciate it. No worries, no worries. Yeah, thank you to everyone for attending and thanks to the lovely panelists as well. All right, well, um, bye everyone and thanks so much once again. Thank you. Bye. Buenas noches. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>